Good. Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Unit 10, Lesson 5, Part 2. We did Part 1 in class, so you don't need to watch Part 1 unless you want to, or if you weren't here. So in class we talked about equilibrium and how the systems at equilibrium can be disrupted by different stresses. We talked about changing concentration and the rule for if you increase concentration, you go away from what you increase. If you decrease concentration, you go toward what you decrease. What you need to know before we move on is that if you shift the equilibrium, then you change the amounts of everybody in the container. And you need to know how they change. So if the reaction shifts to the right, then whatever you're pointing at, you are making more of. Okay, so if you shift right, you're going to use these to make these. So once you know which way you're going to shift, what you recognize is that once re equilibrium is reestablished, you will have more of what you make and less of what you use. Okay, if you were to shift left, then everything's backwards. So let me just erase this. I know you can't, but maybe you want to use a different color pen or something. If you shift left, then you use these, so there will be less of these, and you make these, so there will be more of these. So once you know the shift, we have the stress, you know the shift, then you know the result of that shift. You know that the prop, in this case, these are going to go down and these are going to go up, okay? So if you shift to the right, so we'll go back to shifting to the right in our notes here. If you shift to the right, the hydrogen and carbon monoxide concentrations will increase. But the methane and water concentrations will decrease. Just remember, I remember, whatever you're pointing at increases. So once you know the shift, whatever's on the pointy side of the arrow goes up, whatever's on the flat side of the arrow goes down, okay? And if you were to shift left, whatever's on the pointy side of the arrow goes up, whatever's on the flat side of the arrow goes down. So there will be a stress, there will be a result, the equilibrium will shift one way or the other, and then there will be a, um, uh, you will change the concentrations of everybody in solution. Okay. So we have to talk about the other two stresses then in this video. The second stress is temperature, and it's the same rule, up and away, down and towards, okay? So we're going to have this reaction. Remember that a negative delta H means that the reaction is exothermic. And if you are exothermic, then heat is a product. So I'm just going to add the word heat to this reaction, okay? So I'll put heat over here because delta H is negative, okay? They'll tell you, they'll either write it in or they'll give you the delta H so you'll know where to place heat. In order to know the effect of temperature, you have to know if the forward reaction is exothermic or if the forward reaction is endothermic. So they'll give you those clues, all right? But if you increase temperature, so if your stress is to increase temperature, the rule is you want to go away from heat, up, up, and away. So if you increase T, you go away from heat. Okay? Just like if you're hot, you don't want to go toward heat. You want to run away from the heat. If you're all sweaty and stuff, you don't want to go where it's really warm. You want to go where it's really cool. So if you increase temperature, you're going to go away from the heat. Here's the heat. These are your two choices. You could either go forward or you could go reverse. Which arrow points away from the heat in this example? That's the reverse reaction. And we would say that you would, oops, yeah, you would shift left. The equilibrium would shift left, okay? If you decrease temperature, you go toward heat, okay? So if you decrease T, you go toward heat. It's just like our concentration, up and away, down and towards. Up and away, down and towards. So in this example, if you were to decrease the temperature, you would go toward heat. In this case, this is the forward reaction, and we would say that you are shifting to the right. 
okay? The reason you're shifting to the right is if you go, go forward, look at the way that arrow points. That points to the right side of your paper. Okay, again, what it means if you're favoring the forward reaction, it just means the forward reaction can work faster for a short amount of time. So general rule, if the stress is an increased temp, you go away from heat. If the stress is a decreased temp, you go toward heat. Again, up and away, down and towards. Same idea as concentration. Really nothing new except you deal with heat instead of what you're increasing or decreasing. Okay? The final stress is pressure, and what you need to know about pressure is that it will only affect reactions involving gases. So if there are no gases, then pressure does not have an effect. How do you change the pressure? You can change the pressure really by changing the volume. Okay, so if the stress is an increase in pressure, this is one that's different, okay? If you increase the pressure, you'll go to the side that has the least moles of gas. So it's kind of opposite, increased pressure, least moles. Remember, moles are the coefficients in front of the formula. So if I go to these equations and I just start counting moles of gas, Nitrogen has a coefficient of 1, and it's a gas. Hydrogen has a coefficient of 3, and it's a gas. So there's a total in this reaction of 4 moles of gas on the left. In this reaction, the only thing that's a gas is the NH3, and there's 2 moles on this side. Okay? Again, we go here, you count them up, 1 and 1. There's 2 moles of gas here, and there's 2 moles of gas here. The moles are equal. And if you go here... On the left, there is one mole of gas, but on the right, there's none. Okay? So when you count, when you care about pressure, you really want to count moles on the left and moles on the right of gas and compare them. So, if we look at reaction one, and our stress is to increase pressure. If we were to increase pressure for reaction one, the rule is you go toward the side with the least moles of gas. So that would be this way. That is the forward reaction, and we would shift to the right. So we would say we will favor the forward reaction, and we will shift to the right. Okay? If we're increasing the pressure on reaction two, the rule is you go to the least moles of gas. Uh-oh, the moles are the same. If the moles are the same, then there is no shift. And pressure will not affect the equilibrium. Okay? And finally, if we were to increase the pressure on reaction three, we shift to the least moles of gas whenever you increase the pressure. That would also be a shift to the right, and we would favor the forward reaction. Okay? So pressure is a little bit different than temperature and concentration. If we decrease the pressure, um, so now we're going to decrease the pressure, it's opposite. You go to the side with the most moles of gas. So in this reaction, which I believe you have in your notes, if you were to decrease the pressure, okay, it says what happens if the pressure on the system is decreased, you will go toward the side with the least moles of gas. Oh, excuse me. What are we doing? Oh, this is increasing. Sorry, we're increasing. So we'll go to the side with the least moles of gas. That's right. I thought we were decreasing there. So you go up here and you count your moles. One and three is four. This is two. Our stress is to increase the pressure. The rule when you increase the pressure is you go to the least moles of gas. So what that would mean 
is we would shift to the right. And that means we're favoring the forward reaction. Okay, so again, increased pressure is least gas. Decreased pressure is most gas. Okay, sometimes they ask you about a catalyst. Um, what you need to know, and I don't know if we have this in our notes or not, but catalysts do not shift the equilibrium. They speed up the forward and reverse reaction equally. So if this is not anywhere in your notes on this page, I don't have that page in front of me. Let me just check. I don't think it is. Yeah, it's not. So I want you to add this to the bottom of this page. Catalysts do not shift the equilibrium. They speed up forward and reverse reactions equally. Oh, now look at what I wrote, equals. Okay? So addition of a catalyst will not cause the equilibrium to shift. The forward reaction will go faster and the reverse reaction will go faster. That's all that means. So on Monday, you're going to be working at different stations and stressing equilibria in different ways. And I'm going to require that you make predictions, and then you stress the equilibrium, and you see if what you did was correct, okay? So uh, make sure you're prepared for Monday. And I promise, I know this is abstract, I promise we'll do more practice with this. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye now.